Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, and if this is your first time watching, welcome. My name is Stephanie, and I'm so happy you're here with me today. And I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button and sticking around for a little while. I have a lot of fun projects coming up. I also want to thank each and every one of my subscribers. Y'all mean the absolute world to me, and I'm so happy to have y'all as part of my family. Enough with the talking, let's jump into today's video. I'm going to show y'all how I made this adorable tractor planter that is going to be perfect to change up for the different seasons and holidays using paint stir sticks, items from Dollar Tree, and a few items from Hobby Lobby. I'm also going to include the list of supplies I used and the measurements in the description box down below. To make the planter box for the tractor, I began by measuring out the 5 gallon stir sticks I needed for the top, bottom, and sides. I measured out 4 11 inch pieces, 4 7 inch pieces, and 10 5 1⁄2 inch pieces. I was able to get all of these pieces out of 12 5 gallon stir sticks. Once I had all the pieces measured out, I used my miter box and handsaw to cut them and used a piece of sandpaper to smooth the edges. Like I mentioned earlier, I will be putting all the measurements down in the description box below so it will be easier to find. Once I had all the pieces cut, I took one of the 11 inch pieces and one of the 7 inch pieces and glued them together using wood glue. Then repeated the step using another 11 inch piece and another 7 inch piece to put the rest of the frame together. I made sure to have the pieces lined up exactly the same on each end so the frame would be even. I also went in with a damp paper towel to remove any of the excess glue. I used painter's tape to hold the pieces together until the wood glue was set up and it worked like a charm. I repeated this process using two more of the 11 inch pieces and two more of the 7 inch pieces so I would end up having two identical frames, one for the top of the box and one for the bottom. Once I had both frames put together, I took four of the five and a half inch pieces and used wood glue to glue them in all four corners of one of the frames, making sure the ends were flush with the bottom part of the frame. To make it easier to know where to put the wood glue, I made a small mark on the stick where it met the top of the frame and used that mark as a guide to where to stop with the glue. I used some of the small clamps from Dollar Tree to help hold them in place. Once I had them all glued into the bottom frame, I took the top frame and glued it to the top of the stir sticks, again making sure the ends were flush with the top of the frame, then set it aside for a couple of hours to dry. While I waited for the frame of the planter to dry, I measured how long I needed the stir sticks to make the bottom of the planter. I then cut eight pieces of five gallon stir sticks at seven inches long. I was able to get eight pieces out of four of the five gallon stir sticks.
After giving the box a few hours to dry, I took the remaining six five and a half inch stir sticks and placed them around the inside of the planter to give it the slats. Again, I made small marks where the wood glue needed to stop on both the top and bottom and glued them into place, making sure the ends were flush with both the top and bottom of the planter box. I put one piece on each of the ends and two on each side, eyeballing them to get them as close to evenly spaced out as possible. For the bottom of the planter box, I took the eight 7-inch pieces I cut earlier and glued them along the bottom. I tried to make sure they were even along the edges. I used painter's tape to hold the sticks in place while the glue set up. There were a few that hung over the edge a little bit, but it's not noticeable at all once the tractor is put all together. To make the frame of the tractor, I took two of the half inch wooden dowels from Walmart and cut them to 22 and a half inches long so that I would have two pieces, then I set them aside to use later. For the back wheels, I used two 12 inch MDF wreath rings from Hobby Lobby and two packs of the five gallon paint stir sticks. To make the tire spokes, I started by taking one of the wreath rings and placing one of the paint stir sticks underneath it, trying to get it as close to the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock positions as possible. Then taking a pencil, I marked on the wreath exactly where the paint stir stick needed to be placed and traced the half circle shape onto both ends of the stir stick. I also numbered the stick number one because I wanted to make sure it went back in the proper place once it was cut. To cut the paint stick, I used my miter box and handsaw to get as close to the marks as possible. Then using my cutters, I cut the corners into a more rounded shape to better follow the marks. Once I had the stick cut, I used some sandpaper to smooth it out and round it out just a little more. Once I had the first stick cut to the right length and shape, I placed it back into the wreath and laid out the remaining two sticks. One in the 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock position and the other in the 4 o'clock and 10 o'clock positions. I didn't measure these out to be precise, just got them close enough. I then repeated the steps of marking and numbering the sticks and cutting them out so that now I have three sticks that would fit down inside the wreath ring. Now that I had all the stir sticks cut to fit inside the wreath, I used wood glue to hold them into place. I made sure to line up each stick inside the marks I made on the wreath form as well as make sure I put them in their numbered positions. I also made sure to put some wood glue right in the middle where the sticks crossed on top of one another for added security. They do end up fitting very snugly and that's exactly what I wanted for this part of the project. I also made sure to go in and clean up all the excess glue that might have squished out when I put them into place.
Once this wheel was put together, I took the other 12 inch wreath ring and three more paint star sticks and repeated the entire process to get the other back wheel. To create the front tractor wheels, I used two of the six inch MDF wreath forms from Hobby Lobby and six of the one gallon paint star sticks I picked up at Lowe's. I repeated the same process for these front wheels as I did the back wheels. Now that I had the wheels made, I went in and marked the center of each wheel. Once I had the centers marked, I used a drill with a 3 8 inch drill bit and drilled holes for the axles. Make sure to put a thick enough board underneath the center of each wheel so that when you're drilling the holes, it has some support and doesn't snap the paint star sticks in half. For the axles on the front and back of the tractor, I used two of the 3 8 inch dowel rods from Walmart and cut them both to 8 inches long. After I had both dowel rods cut, I used wood glue to glue them into the holes that I drilled earlier. I also made sure the dowel ends were flush with the outside of the wheel. To give the front wheels a nice finished look, I used two three and a half inch plywood circles from Hobby Lobby and glued them to the center of the wheels to cover up the hole and the end of the dowel rod. To finish up the back wheels, I used two six and a half inch plywood circles from Hobby Lobby. Next, it was time to start assembling the tractor. I took one of the 22 and a half inch dowel rods that I had cut earlier and glued it down to the bottom of the planter box, making sure it was flush with the front of the box and the side of the box. Here, I again used painter's tape to hold the dowels in place while the glue was drying. I repeated this process on both sides of the planter box. You'll notice throughout this whole video, this blue painter's tape was my best friend. I've never used it before, but with clamps, they wouldn't fit on these particular pieces, so the painter's tape worked perfectly. To attach the front wheel so the tractor would set level, I took a piece of a leftover 5 gallon paint stir stick and cut it to 6 inches long and glued it to the back of the axle. While I waited on the front axle to dry, I marked the center of the middle slot on the back of the planter box so I could drill the hole for the steering wheel dowel. I then very carefully drilled a hole with a 3 8 inch drill bit, making sure to elongate it at the top just a bit so that the dowel rod would be at the right angle. Once I had the hole drilled, I took another 3 8 inch dowel rod and decided about how long I wanted it to be so the steering wheel would be at the right height. This ended up being right at 8 inches. Then I cut the dowel to size and used wood glue to hold it into place. Next, to make the steering wheel, I took one of the 3.5 inch plywood circles left over from the front wheels and found the center. Then I took the drill with the 3 8 inch drill bit and drilled a hole so that it would fit down over the dowel. Next, I marked where the wood glue needed to stop and glued the steering wheel into place. To attach the front wheels, I used wood glue to glue the wheels to the bottom front of the planter box. I used the edge of the first stir stick as a guide to where I needed to place the glue, then used painter's tape to hold it in place while it dried. To attach the back wheels, I measured out where the frame needed to be glued onto the wheels so that the tractor would set level. I used a pencil to mark where I needed to put the glue and where the frame dowel rod needed to be set. Again, I used painter's tape to help hold the frame in place, but I also wanted a little extra help to hold it, so I used some of my husband's smaller clamps. I then repeated the same process on the other side of the frame.
While I was waiting for the frame to dry, I decided to work on the exhaust stack for the tractor. I used a leftover piece of the half inch dowel rod and cut it to eight inches and glued it into place right behind the front wheel. For the finishing touches of the exhaust stack, I took a table tennis ball from Dollar Tree and used my hot glue gun to make a hole on either side of the ball so that it would fit down over the half inch dowel rod. Once I had the hole big enough, I simply set it down onto the dowel rod and once it had fully cooled down, there was no need for glue. To make the seat for the tractor, I used one of the wooden planks from the package from Crafter Square that I got at Dollar Tree and measured out the center, which was roughly three and a half inches, and cut it in half. Then I took a scrap piece of the 3 8 inch dowel rod and cut it to one and a half inches long and used wood glue to hold it in place on the center of the back axle. Next, I took the two halves of the wood plank and glued them together in the shape of a seat and set it aside to dry. Once the seat and pedestal was dry, I then centered the seat on the pedestal and glued it into place. I then left the entire tractor overnight so the glue could fully set up. The next day, I gave the tractor a few good coats of the Rust-Oleum metallic spray paint in the color flat burnished amber. To give it a little more dimension, I gave it a light dusting of the black stainless steel. To finish up this tractor planter, I took one of the coconut fiber basket liners from Dollar Tree and cut it in half and then trimmed it up so that I could get enough to cover the open parts of the slats inside the planter box. I just used some hot glue to hold the liner in place and it worked great. I wanted to make this planter so that I could switch it out for the seasons and holidays, so I thought the coconut liner would make it a little bit easier to do that. And that's it, y'all. I just took some floral foam and a few of the red, white, and blue carnations and some random greenery from Dollar Tree and filled up the planter box. I did end up adding an American flag and some red and blue ribbon from Dollar Tree to add a little something extra for Memorial Day and 4th of July. I absolutely am thrilled with how this tractor came out. And y'all, if I can do it, so can you. It was pretty easy once I had all the measurements down. I can't wait to decorate this planter for fall. I know I'm a little bit early, but I'm still pretty excited. As always, y'all, thanks for watching, and if you like this video and want to see more like it, give me a thumbs up, and if you're not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Click that little red button and stick around for a bit. I'll see y'all next time.